Hey everyone, last time we covered flow. Today we're going to look into some potential roadblocks to happiness. I want you to imagine this situation. You're attracted to dude man or lady girl and you finally get the courage to ask them out. Unfortunately for you, they politely reject you. There are two ways you can explain their response. These are unsurprisingly called explanatory styles. There's a pessimistic one and an optimistic one. These explanations are easily broken down into three categories. Personal versus specific, permanent versus impermanent, and pervasive or global versus specific or local. The pessimist way explains it as it is your fault that they said no. You also think that you will always get rejected by everyone. The optimistic way to explain it is that the person just didn't reciprocate your feelings, that in the future somebody will reciprocate. The pessimistic style can cause depression, but it's also a roadblock to happiness. And there's another roadblock to happiness called learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is a behavior where a human or non-human endures repeatedly adverse stimuli that it can't escape or avoid. Think back to the rejection scenario. If this happened repeatedly over time, you may decide to avoid asking anyone out ever again. There was a sad experiment involving dogs exploring this phenomenon. They were attached to a collar that would shock them at random times. One group of dogs could control the shock through a lever. The other, however, was unable to control the shocks at all. Afterwards, the dogs were put into a separate apparatus, a box where the floor would shock one side or the other. The first group of dogs learned quickly to escape by jumping to the other side. The second group sadly lied down and endured the shocks without trying to go to the other side. The only thing that could get those dogs to move was physically taking them to the other side. It has been suggested that learned helplessness can be a precedent for creating a pessimistic learning style. So how might one change the effects of past learning? Cognitive behavioral therapy would be good for both of these situations, since it could work on both the explanatory style and possible behavioral ramifications from learning helplessness. There's also the possibility of learning optimism. Martin Seligman uses an adaptation of rational emotive therapy to do this. First, you have an adversity, such as being cut off in traffic, and a belief about it, such as, I can't believe he was so rude and selfish. And the consequence is you're overcome with anger. Then, he suggests, you have to try and dispute your beliefs. Maybe you're overreacting, and it's pointless to worry about being cut off. Maybe somebody died and he's in a hurry to get to the hospital. Basically, do your beliefs have evidence or other explanations? What are the implications if you hold on to these beliefs? Are the beliefs useful to you if you hold on to them? Finally, how could you be energized by using some more optimistic beliefs or explanations? More or less, what are some good outcomes if you believe optimistically? For example, if I change my beliefs about being cut off, I won't be angry. And if I'm not angry as often, I lessen my chance of a stress-induced heart attack and cardiovascular disease. Alright, so we covered explanatory styles, learned helplessness, and learned optimism. Next time we'll look into one of Martin Seligman's models of happiness and well-being. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like you guys to see if you can identify an inversive situation in your lives and map it out in that ABCDE format. Thanks for being you, and do me a favor and have a nice day.